Science. Tonight we investigate the origins of man. Man's origins. The origins of science. What is science? Is it in fact the heck and hey? Or is it in fact man's greatest intellectual gift? The origins of science. In this video I've donned, as you can see, square glasses that are very scientific. I've also donned a lab coat, which gives me the appearance of also having a higher IQ. These two features clearly scientifically proven to improve my IQ and your perception of me as objective, altruistic, and therefore scientifically true. What is the origin of man? What is the origin of science? Science is not in fact fake and gay, but is in fact real and straight but also at times could be gay because there's nothing morally ever right or wrong. All morals are whatever you want them to be because science is the investigation of facts, not fiction. Let's go to the origins of man. What are man's origins? Is man uh, created by sky fairies? Is there spaghetti monsters that float that make man into their image? No, man is the creation of science. Science is the casing upon the tip of the weenus that tells you you can put that anywhere. And in fact, you should put that anywhere. And if you do not, you're a victim of bigotry. Scientific studies have shown definitively that bigotry is the result of lack of science. Science is connected with education, culture, in fact, there are now apps that are being produced which will, can, cat, can contabulate the moral calculus that Jeremy Bentham gave us to know the pleasure principles and the pleasure points, wherein through scientific science calculus, we can determine the greatest number of pleasure for the greatest number of beings through pleasure points. Science is the... Science is the Bunsen... Science is the Luciferian Bunsen burner of my intellect burning a hole through your soul. Quite contrary to the existence of flying gods, the rational theories of science tell us that the most likely origin of man's origins is panspermia. This is the very rational theory held by many uh, geniuses of the West that our alien creators uh, at one time in the ancient primal past came to us in the form of visitors who then seeded through this panspermia the uh, primordial muck or the primordial soup. As you can see here in this diagram, this is clearly the most rational and only rational position that any scientific person could take. Indeed, the existence of some deity, some disembodied force that flies around through space and creates man upon some uh, worthless, uninhabitable planet is pure poppycock. However, there is much evidence to support the possibility of our alien brothers seeding us here upon the planet of Earth. For millennia, mankind and womankind was trapped. Trapped in superstition, patriarchal domination, as men dominated the weaker and the lesser. Although Darwinism, which is the true story of mankind throughout history and through the aeons, definitely favors the survival of the fittest over the weakest. In fact, it is, it is patriarchy that oppressed and kept down the women, as you can see in this drawing here. Following upon many more millennia of evolving, the species then grew to understand through its secret knowledge, namely through these societies, that science was the key to understanding and unlocking all of nature's secrets. Through this, we learned that all have rights. Rights come from nature. Rights have evolved. Rights have evolved out of matter, just like everything evolved out of matter and out of nothing to be what it is. Consciousness, although it has no definition and has no substance, we can't see it, we can't define it. It, in fact, is what gives us the ability to do science and therefore to determine that all have rights and the right of every individual to determine his or her or its reality, even though there is no objective reality. Science, in fact, comes out of the ancient heroes of truth, the ancient troubadours, the ancient pioneers, those who would fight for the rights of all against tyranny and oppression, those who would seek to raise the IQs of all. 
Science, in fact, has nothing to do with ideology. It's completely neutral. Science has nothing to do with morals or this or that. It's solely based on facts and has absolutely nothing to do with anything conspiratorial or secretive in nature. Because science is based, you see, on what works. And although when I talk about something working, it seems to suggest a value system, it really doesn't because I make those values as I determine what truth is. Although I also don't determine what truth is because truth is objective. Because truth is not objective, it's actually relative. And truth is relative because it's objectively true that truth is relative. And truth is relative because it's relatively true that truth is objective when I relatively say the truth is objective. And so therefore all is relative, except for the fact that all is relative, which is objectively true. If you don't believe and understand this, it is because of your low unevolved IQ numbers down in the double digits and because uh, you are not. Now, I've been acting quite ridiculous, but if you weren't aware, much of what I said really illustrates the facts, doesn't it? The facts about evolution, the facts about science. Science is not neutral. Science is not objective. Science is not free from the other sciences or the, 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 the other disciplines that in fact do come with a theory. It's impossible to be completely neutral. Every interpretation of everything in the world is theory laden. It's impossible to be completely neutral and completely factual because there's no um, given facts that don't have an interpretive context or theory or system within which those facts exist. So if that's the case, and I think that it's pretty easy to demonstrate that philosophically, we can begin to see how science, and I'm not saying there is no science, there is science, but what popularly goes by the title of science for a long time is in fact another layer of propaganda. Again, I'm not, just, I'm not denying that there are many engineers, many scientists out there who do legit science of course but the notion prominent from the time of the enlightenment on that you can be philosophically neutral and produce science or objective facts that don't fit into any interpretive matrix is completely impossible there's no such thing as a brute fact anything that we interpret or understand in the world is part of a larger larger paradigm or schema that we have for interpreting the world. It doesn't mean that we can't know anything or that nothing's true. It just means that that's how we're so constituted. That's just how we are. We interpret things within our worldview. And so therefore, with that in mind, we, begin, we, can, we, can, we can actually begin to see how it, it makes perfect sense that the birth of modern science actually comes out of these kinds of occult orders an occult Rosicrucian, Freemasonic, Hermetic, and alchemical philosophies now these philosophies are not so much prominent now because science has moved on and sort of morphed out of that older baggage you could say but what is still present is a lot of the same mythos and i would argue that even perhaps at the highest levels of science you have a form of luciferianism a form of um initiatory knowledge which is actually seeking to become divine to achieve godhood that is the explanation for transhumanism right that's the explanation for where people are going in the the post-human world what they're trying to do that explains everything with what's being promoted today what we're seeing now with the technocracy right all of that stuff is explained in that paradigm that i'm giving you now from the paradigm of science so-called scientism right this kind of basic bitch view that you get out there nothing is actually coherently explained ironically i mean you can get hyper precision with understanding i don't know nanotechnology or something like that but when these disciplines that are that are hyper precise try to step back and speak about all of life right like molecular biology then they reach back into the ancient aeons past which are not empirically observed and they throw out the wildest theories that consciousness just came to be out of nothing magic magic worldviews when we think of evolutionary theory we realize that the 
concepts of evolution are ancient, right? Ancient Hinduism, ancient Egyptian philosophy, ancient Greek philosophy all had versions of atomism, of, uh, of, of things morphing into, a train, magically changing into other things, right? These, this is the reality behind the origins of these worldviews. And if you go back to the English lodges, right? Again, people, I'm not, I'm not the first person to say this. this has been written on by historians. It's actually those occult lodges that gave us the idea of Darwin, Darwinism, of Darwinian theory. Now, I'm not saying that Darwin himself, but many of those others in his circle, the Huxleys, right? These people were parts of these, a part of these lodges that had this esoteric philosophy, this alchemical philosophy. And the thing about that is that it gives the appearance of wisdom, but in fact, it is absurd, right? It's, it's the same as like ancient Hinduism. It gives the appearance of wisdom. And I'm not saying there weren't intelligent ancient Hindus, but at, at base, the, the philosophy is very contradictory. It'll say things like nothing can come into being on its own. And yet at the same time, consciousness evolves into being. But at the same time, we don't even know what consciousness is. And in fact, there is no consciousness, right? You get these constant vacillating contradictions and dialectics all the time in these ridiculous philosophies. So on the one hand, we're told that humanism is the goal, for example, right? All these enlightenment philosophers and humanists, they want to exalt man, right? The, the humanist manifesto. And yet, what is man? Man is a meaningless product of goo, of ancient Coomer goo, right? Meaningless Coomer goo of the aliens. The alien Coomer goo is you, right? Literally, okay. So that's more rational than theism, supposedly, by many of the panspermia theorists, Dawkins even. It's just another mythology. And this is what a lot of people have a hard time understanding is that they, they, they think that there's like this grand, grand council of science somewhere that like knows all and sees all and determines just based on the evidence. It's all mythology. Now, does that mean that individual scientists in these disciplines don't discover true things and make progress? Of course not. In fact, a lot of real science is engineers. <laughs> Absolutely. They do science all the time because they have to make, you know, the things work, right? Or the, the rocket doesn't work if the engineer doesn't get his stuff right. That's real science. But speculating about what a monkey did 11 million years ago, that's not science. That's science fiction. And if you've read a lot of science fiction, if you read H.G. Wells and all these guys, you start to realize how much science fiction actually influences what we think science is. And Hollywood, of course, had a big role in that, which I covered in my books. So anyway, so I just want to leave you with that, that the real origin of modern science, what everybody worships, what Huxley in Brave New World through the character Mustafa Mann says is a new religion. He says, we will give the people this is one of the top elitists from the Royal Society circles, Huxley, telling you that science will be given as a religion. Now, he's not talking about theory and observation. He's talking about scientism, a religion that's a replacement for the older religions, Bible, etc. And that people will fall for this thinking that there's this etheric Mount Olympus of guys in lab coats with beakers and Bunsen burners full of bubbly blue liquids full of the scientific Coomer goo to make you in a test tube. But what does Huxley say that Brave New World is in this, this grand revolution? He says it's the final revolution. And what is the final revolution? It's the revolution against man himself to achieve the post-human, trans-human future. And that's, in fact, why his brother, Julian Huxley, who wrote the UNESCO Manifesto, coined the term transhumanism to evolve beyond and to replace the human. This is Jay Dyer from Jay's Analysis. Click like below if you would share this because this is reality. This is the real. I'm the real scientist <laughs> telling you what the scientific data of actually reading the history of science tells us. If you like this analysis, be sure to click subscribe and give me a thumbs up down below. Also, be sure to check out Jay's analysis 
uh, and definitely click the bell down below to be sure you get the updates.